Hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry, guys. My name is Sihles Kosana, and this is Close Up Education. You should already know by now that you should be calling me Usem Numzan. And yes, I can see the long faces because of I've decided to call you on a Sunday class. Not by choice, guys, but because of Mabi Dix and Lexi and many more of my subscribers have commented that they would like me to do urban climate. All right. What is an urban climate? In simple form or definition, we will say they are weather conditions or climate conditions which are experienced in the cities. All right, to better understand the urban climate, we have to understand the difference between an urban area and a rural area. Guys, I'm not writing the definition because of you've already crammed it. What did I say? I said there are weather or climate conditions which are experienced in the cities. All right. So what is the difference between an urban area and a rural area? These differences are just visible. Everyone can see them. What do I mean by that? I mean on an urban area, we can see that there are congested tall buildings. Congested and there are tall buildings. While in a rural area, there is some distance between the short houses. There is distance between the short houses. They are not congested as in the urban area. All right, and what else? In an urban area, there are a lot of artificials, such as roads, right? The roads, there are a lot of roads. Whereas in a rural area, oh my brother, will you have to walk on that soil? All right, then we move to our third difference, is that in an urban area, as we can see, there is less green, meaning there is less vegetation. Why? Because of there is obviously a lot of roads, the buildings are closely packed together, there is no free space for vegetation to grow. While on the rural area, there is distance of houses, meaning there is an open land, an open area, area where vegetation could freely grow and could freely be eaten by hey my guy those fruits in a rural area oh my and our fourth difference is that in an urban area there are more industries a lot of industries while in a rural there are less industries or none there are less industries all right and our fifth one our last one is that in an urban area there are a lot of people overpopulation you find in an urban area meaning there are a lot of cars there are a lot of transport vehicles while in a rural area Area, there are less people, less vehicles, and less tra transportation vehicles. All right, now that we know the difference, we have to understand that these differences influence what we call urban heat island. Yes, the urban heat island. Okay, what is an urban heat island? Simply means the temperatures in the cities are warmer than its surrounding rural areas, right? Let's write the definition down. This is what you obviously came for. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Hey, my guy, comment and say, Sam Numzane, give us more and I appreciate you. Okay, let's write down the definition. I said it is whereby the temperatures are warmer in the cities. than its surrounding rural areas. Yes, this is our definition. In order to best understand our definition, I have to draw a sketch. All right, so this is what we call our cross section, right? So in our cross section, this will say this is our temperature, right? So our temperature obviously increases, guys. This is our five degrees Celsius, and this is our 10, 15, and lastly, 20, right, degrees. And we know that in, this is our, what we call urban area, and this is what we call our rural area. So what do we know about that? We know that in an urban area, the temperature increases, whereas in the rural area, the temperature decreases, right? So this is our nicest urban area. Nice buildings we draw there. 
This is our urban area, right? The temperature increases in an urban area while here in our nicest rural area, the temperatures does what? It decreases towards 5 degrees while it increases towards 15 or over 20 degrees, right? So why and how does that okay? So we know that there is what we call direct insulation from the sun, right? So there is obviously what we call radiation from the sun, directly insulating both the urban area and the rural area. So when this insulation obviously directly insulates the urban area, what will happen? There will be some what we call the wind will be deflected and trapped within the tall congested buildings in an urban area. So this heat coming from our sun will be obviously trapped by these tall buildings, the artificial such as the roads. My guy, if you do not know that the road traps heat, try to find out. Take out those shoes and go and stand in the middle of the road. You will find out, right? So the road, the tall buildings, they trap the heat within the urban area. So what does that cause? It causes the temperature to increase because of the heat it is trapped within this area right and what else do we also find as i've said that there are a lot of people in an urban area right so when there are a lot of people this will obviously means there are a lot of cars right and when there are a lot of cars pollution meaning that there is what we call pollution coming from cars and coming from industries where in an urban area there's a lot of carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide will obviously not be able to be absorbed why because of i said in an urban area there is less vegetation so the vegetation it is not there that to make sure that it absorbs at least the pollution coming from the cars or the industries in the area and try to release much needed oxygen and also there are no lakes rivers or even dam to be able to absorb this direct radiation from the sun and create water vapor out of it right so as we know that this air will continue to arise or ascend the air coming from the industries and the cars and also because of there is no vegetation there will be obviously a lot of rising polluted air remember it is polluted so it rises and obviously create what clouds obviously when there is a rising warm air communion clouds will be formed or any clouds will be formed then precipitation will occur so we know that in the urban area they will obviously experience a bit of precipitation because of there is a lot of heat which is stored in this area mainly because of the tall buildings and mainly because of there's overpopulation all right let's continue and understand the effects which come about this heat which was obviously stored in this area obvious if there has been heat which was stored in this area people will now begin to have diseases such as heat cancer or heat rash and also the most important diseases which usually affect the people during the urban heat island are the respiratory diseases such as TB and asthma. Those are diseases that are influenced by the pollution and the heat which is trapped inside this area, this urban area. The heat which is obviously trapped here. And what else? Obviously there is precipitation. We know what precipitation does. It destroys a lot of infrastructure those artificial things which were obviously built in an urban area will be destroyed communication cables will be destroyed so precipitation comes with a lot of effect and also hails will be influenced meaning there will be some ice coming into our urban area from our obvious atmosphere coming in a high speed and smashing and most people buildings and a lot of things and what else because of this dust and there is pollution in this area this will mean there will be fog there will be some fog here meaning people might be involved in some accidents because of 
there's what we call fog. All right, guys, so now we know mostly is that in an urban area, on an urban heat island, there is what we call the cloud cover. Our cloud cover, it is obviously there are more clouds in an urban heat island. There's precipitation and there's what else? We know that the wind speed, the wind speed, it is slow in the urban area, whereas it is very fast in a rural area. Why? Because of in an urban area, there are a lot of abstractions. So there are a lot of buildings that are congested. So the wind will obviously not be moving as it would when there is an open space like there is in the rural area. All right, guys. So obviously, at least you have found a bit of marks. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Hey, my guy, where have you been? Okay. So what we are saying is that what will happen during the urban heat island there will be high temperatures what does high temperature mean it means this area will be a low pressure because of this ascending air right so these are your marks guys high pressure precipitation the heat is, is trapped within the tall congested buildings and what else we also have to understand the pollution dome because of we know that there are a lot of human and industrial and business activities that are happening in an urban area meaning there will be obviously pollution so there is what we call a pollution dome make sure that you like this video wait until i wipe this board and we continue okay okay what you've been waiting for make sure that you have already subscribed because of more lessons like this ones are coming so this is what we call our pollution dome right what do we know about our pollution dome we know that pollution dome it changes when it's during the day and also when it's during the night so let's start with during the day during the day there's obviously what we call sun there's direct insulation coming from the sun, hitting what? Our nicest CBD. Yes, our urban area. It is obviously directly insulated by the sun. And what will happen? We obviously have spoken about this. The heat will be trapped. And obviously, there's also what we call evaporation coming from industries that are releasing polluted air and coming from the cars that are also releasing a lot of polluted air because of there's less vegetation to absorb that pollution there will be a pollution dome created right so this will obviously be rising air coming from those industries i've talked about and what else did i say i said this is a low pressure meaning its surrounding area which is the rural area has to be what we call a high pressure and what do we know about low pressure and high pressure it is that pressure moves from what high pressure to a low pressure air moves from a high pressure to a low pressure so there will be cool air coming to the cbd from the rural area which will add to the warm air that is polluted which is already rising and there will be more rising air in the cbd right there's more heat in the cbd more rising air and obviously we know as air rises it will obviously reach the troposphere and what will happen there the air will do what diverge so our air will rise and diverge so this is how it's going to look like this is how our structure will be looking like right this is our structure. So they say this is like a mushroom shape. So they are saying this is a mushroom shape dome. During what? During the day. This is during the day. There is what we call less descending air. Because of there is more ascending air during the day. Alright, so what does this actually mean? It simply means in simple form. It simply means that the pollution during the day it is able to escape our cbd even though some of that pollution will be able to stay or trapped because of the tall buildings but then some dust particles and pollution and polluted air will be able to escape out of our cbd meaning during night 
this has to be complete opposite because of that's how geography works you know one characteristics you will definitely know the other if you are comparing the two so this is during the day and during the night we do not have this we do not have the sun right so meaning if there is no sun our cbd it is not receiving or being heated up by any source meaning there will be what we call descending air right there will be descending air towards our what we call cbd yes my brother our cbd right our urban area but because of we know that during the day there has been directly insulation and there has been pollution a lot of pollution coming from a lot of industries a lot of people what will happen obviously there was pollution trapped within the buildings so this cold air will not fully descend towards the ground of our cbd so it will create a dome like shape right so a dome like shape will be created whereby there is obviously warm polluted air which is trapped within the cbd during the night right so this is what will happen what are the effects of pollution dome very much the same as our urban heat island obviously people will obviously start to have some sicknesses such as respiratory sicknesses because of the pollution it is trapped inside our area it is trapped inside the cbd so people will obviously have trouble breathing because of there is what we call polluted warm air for like 12 hours that's how long you sleep guys so just think about it you are sleeping inhaling the whole polluted air for 12 hours you will obviously get sick all right so guys what else do we have to know about urban or we could say pollution dome so when it comes to the pollution dome and also the urban heat island we have to obviously find the strategies to manage this effect guys the strategies are very simple i would say that would be your homework but then it is very simple obviously what has to happen the cbd has to now try and build or plant more vegetation build a lot of water parks around the area water parks which will obviously uh, absorb that sun radiation and also limit the heat within the area and they also have to do what give out fines to the industries which are deposing a uh, polluted air and say if you are deposing this amount of polluted air you have to pay an amount so that will obviously decrease the uh, the polluted air which will be uh, coming out of the industries and also what will happen uh, try to go green what do i mean by that uh, our governments must try to implement the solar system the solar panel uh, strategy whereby uh, a lot of uh, buildings have solar panels and that will obviously lead to us not using a lot of uh, coal uh, electric industries we're using coal for our electricity so obviously we have to use our soils for clean energy and a clean cbd and maybe our buildings have to to uh, to have some gardens on top build some rooftop gardens so that it could obviously not attract that radiation from the sun all right guys i think this has been the best lesson for me i've enjoyed this lesson i like this lesson it is very much easy geography it is if you stick with close up education a lot of topics will feel much more easier all right because of i'm leaving i can't leave without saying it make sure that you like this video subscribe to my channel hey my guy comment and say thanks we are moving to what we call ah uh, ah uh, i'm waiting for your comment okay